Hi guys, and welcome back to episode nine of Posties in DC. And it's crazy to say episode nine. I'm here with my co-host Claire. Claire, how how are we doing? Hey, I got a week off. I'm thriving. (laughs) I got a week off in the podcast. If you didn't listen last week, they talked about sports and I have mm, virtually no knowledge of sports. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit this one out. I'm going to let Hannah take it away as the moderator because I mean, you're, you're a step up for me. But I don't know. So I was like, it's very, it's very much like half a step. Yeah, fair it's enough. a full step in hockey, half a step in football. <laughs> Whenever we started talking about baseball, I was like, I cannot contribute anything. I'm so just gonna, over. I'm just gonna let them run the podcast hey, at that point. But you know what? We both can talk about dating. Dating. <laughs> So this week, we're going to be talking about dating, um, particularly in D.C., obviously. This is a different scene from what we're used to. I mean, we went from, you know, small towns, and now we're in D.C., which is a big town, and it's very different from Athens, because, of course, Athens is very different from D.C. But first, highs and lows. lows. Claire, what's your high for the week? I just saw my family. (laughs) Uh, So my family was in town. They came, they flew down to D.C., um, it was nice to just hang out with them. I got to do some more touristy things that I like going to the museums. I'm starting to slowly mark the ones off my list I want to see. I still feel like I have a good amount of different museums I want to see, so mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm getting there, but like, um, we went to an improv show and I ate really good because my parents were paying for it <laughs> and it was just nice to see them because, I mean, I'm going to go home for Thanksgiving, but I haven't seen them since I moved down here because it's not like... My sister just went to college. She's at o- Ohio State, and uh, she doesn't have a car or anything. Right. And, like, my parents work, so it's not like I've been able to just, you know, see them all the time. Um, so it was nice being able to see them. I have loved that. What was your high? My high? I feel like I had a pretty good week, but I'm very excited for this upcoming week because more posties will be in D.C. Oh, Yeah. Um, some more posties, um, some people from Woobs, some people from Thread and OUSPJ, and the new Political will be down here mm-hmm. um, as a part of Media Fest um, in conjunction with um, Society of Professional Journalists and College Media Awards. Yeah. It's going to be a whole thing. It's There's a like whole tw- conference. <laughs> 20 of us. There's going to be a flock down here. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited to see our friends. Yeah. I really like being in D.C. I think we got our fun mix whenever we were there for homecoming. Um, but when I, I'm going to be real. Whenever mm-hmm. I was seeing pictures of people going to the Rocky Horror Show, I got a little FOMO. That and was I, this past weekend. Yes. This weekend that happened. And I think I got a little bit of like, aw, I, well, wanna, I, I miss my friends. I still haven't been to Rocky Horror. Neither have I. You haven't gone either? No. So the thing is, Rocky Horror, if you don't already know, is huge at Ohio University. It's, I don't know for how long it's been huge, but it's been years. years of it just being a huge thing. Freshman year, we weren't on campus, so I don't even think they did it because they I didn't have... Think they, I was on campus and I don't think they did it. They don't... I don't think they did it our freshman year. Sophomore year was this past year and I got in line, but I got there too late. I didn't understand how big it was. Oh. Yeah. So then I didn't get in. Um, and then this year, obviously, we're here. So right. I still haven't gone. So the first time I'll go is next year. <laughs> have you never been to a Rocky Horror show in general? I mean, I've watched it, but I've never uh, gone to one. You've never been to a live... Oh, my god! I haven't gone to a live one. <laughs> Your first time is like gonna be amazing i'm not gonna spoil it for you but they do really fun stuff for your first time i mean fair enough i mean i've i've watched it and i'm in like the musical theater community like i did musical theater in high school as a charity so like i know like i know but i haven't like done it yet so i like i want to do it it'll be really special for your first time that's all i'm gonna say yeah but i got after that i got a little film and i was like i'm ready to come see my friends and our friends are coming back and i'm gonna be really excited yeah to see everybody yeah claire what's your low for the week Time is moving fast. Time is moving really fast. It is episode nine, so it's like That's week crazy. nine? Or, no, it's not. It can't be it's week, week nine. nine. I can't do it. That's crazy. This is going too fast because like we don't have that many weeks left. I was talking to my supervisors. My internship is only 10 weeks, so I only have seven weeks left of my internship. So seven weeks left here, basically, because my internship ends and then we move out. So like I have to start thinking about... like um when I'm when I when I'm gonna move into my ne- next place and like I need to go talk to my subleaser and <laughs> I'm also thinking about like it's so weird like having relationships with people here and like the hesitation of like do I build relationships with people here because I'm already more than halfway done with my time here in DC and I want to build these relationships just to have to end them right. and like 
it's it's a weird um it's moving fast and it's starting to pick up i also was thinking about like i think it has to do with the fact that like the fall is so busy in compared to like the spring i feel like january february march kind of drags a little bit right. but like you know august august all september it goes fast and so it's just like hit me again like oh crap i don't have that much time so my low this week was thinking about how little time we have left and i'm like we just got here (laughs) so that's where i'm at this week and i'm freaking out right but what's your low (laughs) oh gosh my low is that i'm not gonna be able to work in the office for another Mm -hmm. like week and a half two weeks Mm -hmm. so basically um for everyone who my office works really weirdly for when i was talking about training Mm -hmm. in earlier episodes i was working two weeks straight so 14 days straight as my training and then I went to every other day um for those two weeks I was not allowed in the office Mm -hmm. um I was working from home um which kind of sucked and then for certain aspects of my job whenever we do press call days um so like the days where press conferences are happening um I don't go into the office because you're making calls all day so like you don't have time to get ready a and b they don't want you when you're sitting there making 20 calls in a crowded office. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been able to work in the office much, which mm-hmm. I actually really don't like. I mm-hmm. like being in the office. I think being in the Senate building is really cool. I've now gotten to the point where I don't get lost in the Senate building anymore. Hey. <laughs> but now I can't work in the office because um, somebody in my office tested positive mm-hmm. And thankfully, <laughs> I was not in the office. Right. That you didn't day. go in. I didn't go in. Um, they were working a different day than I was, but now the entire office has been <laughs> exposed. So all the legislative interns are now off. Which means they can't even they can't even they work can't do their you, jobs. You can't take constituent calls from home. Right. Um, so all the legislative interns are off through the next like week and a half, two weeks, and then all the press interns have to work from home. So I'm going to be working from home. And I'm not going to lie. I don't like working from home when we're in D.C. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of, like, being able to walk out. There are certain days where I'm like, yes, I'm very tired. I, I need I just to be want home. To <laughs> but then there's other days where I'm like, it's a really nice day. And I wish I could go do a walk. Or I wish I could, like, um, there's this courtyard that's in mm. between all the Senate buildings. Mm-hmm. I would really like to go, like, eat my lunch out there. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to be home. <laughs> hey. You reminded me to pack my lunch for tomorrow, so right. <laughs> at least that's, that's a good thing. But Now we're going to get into the real subject of this oh, episode, yeah. which is dating and dating in D.C. Oh, yeah. Like what you've all been waiting for, because we teased it episode one and then haven't talked about it. This episode kept getting pushed back because we were trying to find what is the best way to talk about this and the best way to get outside because we don't want to just be the two here that are like just talking to you and being like well this is our really narrow experiences so we were trying to like think about a way to do it but to talk about our narrow experiences I mean we're both single (laughs) that was definitely the thing of like Claire and I are in very specific situations Mm -hmm. where we were both single in the big city oh yeah um and it It was weird to think about because in Athens, I feel like you're not going to be like, LOL, I'm single in Athens. I'm single in Athens. And and, and like the world is the world is my oyster. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the most that you're going to find single in Athens is a decent man at Stevens. Um, I mean, for me, like when it comes to like dating in Athens, I've never had a dating app in Athens. I've I've, I've avoided it. I've avoided it. I mean, I have only been in... Athens to where I could be doing that for like a year and a half right or if you had two years um I mean like when I was a freshman I was just kind of like meeting people all the time and then I wasn't dating anybody and then I ended up dating somebody for most of my sophomore year so then I you know didn't need dating apps and then um (laughs) I've had dating apps before but like never used them in Athens so I don't know and everybody knows each other in Athens everyone knows each other in Athens and that's why I have never ever taken dating apps seriously in Athens <laughs> I've never gone out on a date with somebody from a dating app in Athens I um, haven't gone out on a date with somebody on a dating app until here right which Same. is also a thing um but beforehand also I'd like to preface um this is the longest period in college that I have been single really yes oh my god because <laughs> <laughs> which isn't good Hey, first semester, first I semester, yeah, first semester, met my first boyfriend, mm-hmm. 
and my first like real boyfriend mm-hmm. first semester of college broke up by the end of first semester second semester met my boyfriend dated into the summer before sophomore year broke up into the summer of sophomore year and then dated someone for the majority of almost sophomore. all of my sophomore year right um so I think before this experience, probably the max I have been single for in college is six weeks. Oh my god! I mean, like, it, like hey, in the year, thing. in the year, it's been like six weeks. Getting your experiences in. I it's mean. definitely like I kind of like. I liked the idea of being able to be like on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's also strange because whenever we. You and I are both 20, mm-hmm. um, so it's not like we're looking for husbands. No. Um, you know what I mean? And we're also in a city that, like, we're not that familiar with, so going on dates with people from dating apps has been one of those scariest, most intimidating things I've ever done. The amount of anxiety I get before a date, um, crazy. I, I mean, I would always get, like, anxious before dates and, like, freak myself out and be like, I'm not gonna go, I don't wanna go, I right. <laughs> But I was even more so because I was like, I don't know where I am necessarily and I got to be really safe because who is this guy? So like I would talk to these guys for like a few weeks. <laughs> you have to like really scope them out. Yeah, I've only gone out with three guys and each of them I talked to them for a while because and I again three because even though I've been here for nine weeks, I cannot, like, the mental toll it takes to, like, go out and, like, put yourself out there. Oh, yeah. In general, is scary. And then do it somewhere like this um, where you don't exactly know who they are. And, like, in Athens, everybody knows everybody. So if you go out with somebody, exactly. there's, the chances are somebody knows who that is. Somebody knows who that is. Somebody knows exactly where they live. Mm-hmm. The farthest you're going to get is, like, the courtyard apartment. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's not that much. There's not that much leeway. Yeah. And here too, you were talking about this earlier. Mm-hmm. Building relationships with people when you were leaving. Mm-hmm. You are only going to be here for a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. You're not looking for a husband. Mm-hmm. You're leaving You're after sixteen leaving. weeks. So yeah. how much of a relationship can you build? In 16 yeah. weeks. We talked to somebody, we met somebody at like a, like some, some friends were hanging out and this guy was talking about how aggravated he gets when he sees people who come here for internships <laughs> that are on dating apps and they say in their bio specifically what their case is, which is usually like they want something that is exclusive, but they don't expect you to build a relationship with them. Which I actually find really respectable that somebody is like, I don't want to commit to hookup culture, but I don't think it's right for me to ask a relationship of you, but I do want something exclusive with a certain person. I don't think that's a bad thing, but this guy was very aggravated and he was not having it. He was like, I hate that mentality. Why are you even in dating apps? It's a waste of time. You're wasting everybody's time here. And I was like, well, you need to understand, like, some people want to have a connection with somebody, but they don't want to participate in hookup, hookup culture. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. So, like, it's conflicting. <laughs> it's and hard to think about. That's a big stereotype. Mm-hmm. So when Claire and I came to D.C., there were kind of a few reoccurring stereotypes that we were listening to mm-hmm. um, that we kind of confirmed in the later part of this episode oh, yeah. before I spoil anything. <laughs> but I think one was either... And this may be similar. I don't think it's as similar in Athens, but I do think it's still prevalent in Athens. Mm-hmm. You were either looking to hook up with somebody or you were looking for a long-term marriage. Yeah. I think that's way more prevalent here because the pressure of, like, professionality, mm-hmm. the pressure of coming from, like, the good family. Right. Or coming from a good career. Yeah. Or, like, even just ha- living in, like, the right areas. Mm-hmm. You're, people are either looking for a hookup, people are looking for marriage, and there's not that much in between. I think maybe in Athens, marriage is a long-term relationship. Yeah. Um, I think there's more, like, gray area, though, over yeah. there than there is here. 
Yeah, I feel like there's way more gray area. I don't feel like... I mean, for... Maybe that's just... It's just an Ohio thing in my mind, but the people who are looking to get married are religious. Um, right. <laughs> that might just be an Ohio thing, because I think people are probably a little less religious here just because of, like, the culture in D.C., um, but that's what I think of when I think of people that are already like thinking about getting engaged and married or mm-hmm. the people that are kind of religious. Um, that's nece- not necessarily a bad thing, just not my thing. <laughs> um, but then again, I'm also one of those people that I don't necessarily, I've never really participated in hookup culture and, uh, it's not really my thing. Right. So, but it's definitely a thing I think here that, you know, you hop on dating apps and you see people who seem very intense, um, and they're like not playing games right. or they're like, let's meet up tonight and i'm like whoa scary (laughs) and a lot of people are upfront on dating apps of i just want a hookup yeah or like they'll sometimes even put it in their profile of Mm -hmm. like i am looking for someone like to meet somebody at a bar take them home and that's that's it it. that's it that's all Um, i need (laughs) and if that's what and if that to preface like if that's what you want to do go for it but I feel like it, it's such a hard time of being like, you can either have this one night stand or you can get, get engaged. Like, and that's so much just like, it's not, it's, it's not. It's not. That's stereotype number one. Stereotype number Addressed. one. Addressed. <laughs> kind of. Stereotype number two, which I feel like also is just a huge DC stereotype. Mm-hmm is people are very pretentious when looking for future partners. Mm-hmm. Um, what you do is that's, gonna that's play just a huge a thing. role. <laughs> that is the thing. I mean the thing is what do you do? What what's your job? What do you what do? Are your career? Who what do are your you work goals? For? <laughs> um, I think a huge thing is income. Mm-hmm. A huge thing is where you live. Mm-hmm. Do you come from the right family? Are you associated with the right people? Yeah. Um, even how you look yeah that's a huge people do you look expensive yes do you not <laughs> i think in athens it's i it's, think this can play into different things but i think it's to the extreme here yeah you're not gonna ask i don't i don't walk around athens looking yeah. for somebody wearing gucci <laughs> like I if do you're not wearing ex- gucci in athens you should not like what but, like yeah. i don't expect people to be wearing designer clothes but like no. people here might expect to find somebody that wears designer clothes that could be a requirement for them and like sure do your thing but like your standards are whoo above right. mine because i do not care if you're wearing louis vuitton sorry <laughs> no people actually like genuinely care here yeah and i think that kind of plays into the role too of like am i looking for something long term mm-hmm. aka an engagement a marriage yeah um because it's all who you know down here yeah it's all who you know yeah and we're still talking about college students, like, completely. This there is are, fully college this students. This is still... We're talking about college students. College students who are wearing these expensive clothes. College students who are looking to get married, which freaks me out, but there are seriously people our age looking to get married and are planning on getting married, etc. And that freaks me out, but that's just me. Because <laughs> people, have, people have kind of their lives planned out. Mm-hmm. I think more so here with the pressures of living in a big city and, like, working yeah. in these professional jobs that we are i mean i feel like a lot of the parents that encourage their students to come to like an american a george washington university a howard university have these expectations of like you being super successful in life and having a plan set out for you whereas i'm not trying to say this about high university students but i don't have that i mean like right. members are like live your life <laughs> right so. i don't think there's the pressures of like you're gonna go find your wife at ohio university hey some people do though some people do <laughs> Because a lot of people do meet people they marry. But I don't think parents are, like, sending you to Ohio University to be like, no. find your find your significant other for the rest of your life. Right. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing. Okay. Stereotype two addressed. Addressed. Stereotype <laughs> three, which I think is very just D.C. specific. I think it can play a little bit into Ohio. It it's play- very D.C. I think it plays specific. into the person. I do think it plays into the person Because as well. I'm one of these people. But anyway. Politics plays a huge role in dating. And you heard that and you were like, oh, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> we're I in think, D.C. <laughs> I think here it's so intense. Yeah. Everybody that I talked to was like, I would not date somebody from, like, the opposite political party. Yeah. Which yeah. is strange to think about. I think I I have gone out with – actually, no, that's a lie. I have dated people from the opposite political party. Mm-hmm. Um, did I enjoy it? No. <laughs> Didn't say that. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> hold on. Um, 
yeah, no, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> but I I don't think it like has stopped you from I don't think it like stopped me from pursuing that person. Mm-hmm. Um should it have? In one case, yeah. But <laughs> I think I think it does. I think here, especially especially when you go to a campus like American or like mm-hmm. Georgetown, it will like stop people mm-hmm. immediately. Mm-hmm. And I think because it's such a it's such a problem. It's just part of like the culture here, where like you're yeah. gonna go and you're gonna sit down at a bar and you're gonna talk to somebody about the policies that they. People who work here, mm-hmm. people who live here, working in politics is like it has to be like 50 percent of the people living here if not more right so like obviously they're going to care a lot about having somebody who either aligns with what they believe in or somebody that they can at least talk to about those things and if they're not on a, the same political spectrum or pl- like similar enough it might be hard now political spectrum talking i mean some people might just find that like they want somebody who they can talk to and if they don't necessarily have to be on the same side of things but i i would agree that like there there has to be some level of like we have foundational beliefs that we both agree on because Mm -hmm. you can't really have a relationship with somebody that you're constantly fighting with. I mean, this is a working city. If you are stressed out and talking about politics (laughs) 59-7, like all the time, I don't know what 59-7 is, but (laughs) if you're always talking about them, you're probably going to want a partner that's also like on a similar page to you. Um, You don't want to be arguing again when you go home like it's not worth your time I mean for me when it comes to like politics and dating I feel like I've naturally gravitated towards people that I have similar beliefs with um or just somebody I could feel like even if we're not on the same like political belief if I have like a foundational belief you're similar to it or I can have an actual conversation with you if I feel like you're just gonna shut me down immediately and be like I don't want to hear your opinion on it I not can't. that's not okay i can't engage with that <laughs> i cannot i mean i work i mean like i work at cnn and like some people look at cnn and assume it's like uh, you know one side like it's, it's a liberal whatever and it's it shouldn't they shouldn't assume that but like obviously people are gonna have hesitations about somebody who works at cnn so like i'm already gonna be like put in a bubble right <laughs> on, put on one side of the spectrum even though i don't even necessarily believe that way maybe but like people are just gonna do that to me so like it's gonna be a thing and then I'm working in a political unit of course I'm gonna want to talk about it and I'm not gonna want to talk to somebody about it that's just gonna be like well blah 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 to me all day I'm gonna be like I've spent all day (laughs) already and then you're gonna just go off on like so like I can see how politics could play a huge role in dating here but I can also see somebody who is a nursing major being like i do not care (laughs) right i do not care i am not a journalism major i'm not a lawyer like i'm not into any of that and i'm sick of it i can see that too (laughs) some people don't care and i think claire and i can only pull from our personal experiences so that's why we went we went back to the streets you went went back to the streets i did because here's the thing yeah her origin is what happens in court street stays on court street if you have never watched, listened, whatever before, go watch it. It's go. great. I did Man on the Street during fest. See, almost every fest, I was doing Man on the Street work. Man on the Street work is fun. I've I done Twitter. It. I've done Twitter Man on the Street, but it's nothing like doing a podcast because I'm just taking little pictures, making my mm-hmm. little captions. You're talking to people. No, I loved <laughs> it, and I really hope. I'm so excited to go back to fest season. But I went back to my roots. And I went to American earlier today, American University, and I asked people about their dating lives. Um, Because, again, narrow, narrow narrow experiences, special experiences because of what our situation is. So she got to the root of it. I got to the root of it. um, Kind of not to spoil it because you will hear these interviews soon. Um... People are not happy with the dating life in (laughs) D.C. People are not happy. (laughs) Um, Some people did, like, go off. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, very, like, great content. But, Mm -hmm. like, people were upset. Um, People don't like the dating life in American. I think they, like, the pool is just not there. Mm -hmm. I also didn't know American University was 70-30. 70 girls 70 percent girls and 30 percent boys i didn't know that i didn't know that that's crazy it's 70 30 um but dc in a whole is probably not 70 30 so oh no no no, no. (laughs) Uh, just just an american it's 70 30 um they do not 
look to date at American. Mm. People very much are like, I will look to date in the city. I don't want to date on this campus. Mm. Um, it was it was really interesting. I got to talk to a lot of people. A lot of people were like, no, don't talk don't to me. Talk. I don't want to um, talk about this. <laughs> when I went to the campus this morning, first off, it was bare, mm-hmm. which is so strange because even on a Sunday, I feel like college green and the campus would still be like, popping yeah people would be people walking, would be walking around. People, would be, people would be like on college green like doing stuff especially if it was like 60 degree mm-hmm. like nice-ish weather um i don't think that's like maybe americans just not one of those campuses where you like like to hang out in the quad or maybe we found a day that was dull but <laughs> right um but a lot of people were just they were ready to openly talk about how bad it was um i think all the stereotypes that we just discussed you'll hear like kind of reign true in this and it's just not great all right so anything else to preface i'm just gonna say like first controversial opinion oh you has a better campus than american oh i'm gonna i'm gonna whip that out you're uh, you're gonna see it and like if you pull up the video pull up the video because there's a video once again guys come on we're putting time I, and effort right <laughs> i don't think it was that great um i i didn't think it was that pretty the dorms were weird how they were like configured the way the campus was configured too is weird because not only was it a 25 almost 30 minute walk from the american university metro station Mm -hmm. um it was just weird like you were going it was like two blocks of restaurants then you kept going and it was like neighborhoods Mm -hmm. and then it was american university and just the campus itself it just wasn't I missed Athens. That made me miss Athens. I was like, I, um, ZZ, who was in our core cohort, Zach Zerman, um, came with me and we were like, it's not, this isn't it. <laughs> so that's the first thing you're going to see. Second thing you're going to preface is no, not a lot of guys would talk to me. Hey. Every time I approached a male, they were like, yeah, no. No, um, I don't want to talk about And I think that. maybe that, maybe the, that is also a telling tale of the dating scene at American University is so bad that they don't want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, without further ado, here are some people's opinions on the dating scene in American. So guys, what is probably the worst thing about dating in DC? Oh, uh, well, well, first of all, on campus, it's 70-30, so our pool of dating is already really limited. Um, and then, I don't know, we have a really small pool to start with, and then you don't really want to look off campus because it's a lot harder to find people off campus to like start, so that's a problem. Um, okay, well, it's people... I think because they're all college students and like they have different goals in their life than maybe people do like I'm more interested in like getting to meet somebody rather than f***ing them after the first time I see them. A lot of people here just want to f*** and like that's the the nicest way I can put it but like I'm not really into that and then when you say like ah like can't we like just talk first they're like "Mm, I'm good. Are there stereotypes about dating on the American campus? Like there's nothing good. Like Like, all the guys like are either really weird or like don't like girls, so there's like some <laughs> So... <laughs> have you guys like gone out on dates since being? I have. Okay. Was it good? Was it bad? How was it? <laughs> no comment. No comment. No comment? Okay. I think that explains it for itself. Yeah. So Issa, what is your experience like dating either on just Americans campus or in the city in general? Um, Let's see, it's definitely very interesting. I feel like here, because there's so many people, like from all walks of life, it can be really interesting because like, you'll meet so many interesting people. Like if you have like the ability to like through parties, um, through like dating apps, stuff like that. Um, It's a very international city. So it's really interesting meeting people from like different areas and stuff. I also work like in politics and it gets actually worse there because like, if I'm working for like a Democratic person and they're working for a Republican person, like even if we dive, like it'll be like, oh, but you supported that bill that like kind of like ruined all my work. So thanks for that. It's just like gross. I don't know. You either get like really immature people or like really mature people who like are already like planning the next 20 years of their lives and they're like, I'm looking for marriage. Oh, that's another thing. We're right <laughs> near like army bases and everything. So you're getting people who just want to fuck 
and you're getting people who want to marry you and then go to like a different country and fight a war. Those are your options that you have. So they're not really good options. So be single. Don't talk to anybody. <laughs> Do you have any advice for people kind of who are either on American or kind of like me who are just like new to the city? Yeah to get into the dating pool and put themselves out there? I would say go to parties and try to meet people organically because um, dating apps can really not be it sometimes, especially dating apps like Tinder and Hinge. Like, um, you know, like obviously, like if you're just trying to like meet someone, like that's like the easiest way. However, like it can also like lead to very like superficial relationships. Um, it can lead to like a lot of like drama and stuff like that. And, like that's not really what you want. So I, my biggest recommendation to anyone is just to um, try to meet someone like organically through like classes, um, friends, stuff like that. You've met people like quality people through like organic stuff or have you been able to meet people through like dating apps or stuff like that? Definitely organic stuff. Um, dating apps has never really been my thing personally. Like I've been like on a few but like not really. I'm more like because I'm someone who I'm way off vibes. I like, you know, when I meet people, I'm like, I want to hang out. I want to like, you know, talk to you and like in person and give off vibes because that's how I think people get to know me and get to like, like being around me. So yeah, I mainly it's more organic, more like in class. Like I get then like, you know, maybe we start talking outside of class and then like from there just, you know, going to hang out. But, yeah. You have mature and immature people. So the mature people are like, okay, I want to be partner in a firm when I'm like 29 or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Or you have people who are like, I'm gonna be a senator soon, so like I really don't know if I could be hanging around with you. Like you're not from, you're not directly like related to a Kennedy. And I'm like, what yeah. the actual hell am I supposed to do right now? There, everything yeah. that you've heard is true. Okay. Yeah. I hate to like be like a a bitch, but like everything is true. Okay. Thank you so much, guys, for listening for this episode of Postseason DC. Hope I'm, you liked those interviews. I know. <laughs> Some people were very excited to talk with me. Um, I'm sure I'll end up at American University's TikTok at some point. Hey, there's got to be more. There's got to there's gotta be more. But so, you thank like you so it. much for listening. <laughs> uh, keep tuned for... More Seven content. Episodes. We got more. We got a few more episodes. We're not going. We, we got some more. So we're gonna go to the end of the semester. We're to the go. end of the ride. We're gonna go. So keep coming back. If you liked this one, there'll be more of it. You never know. Maybe we'll have more. We'll continue having guests. We're gonna continue talking to people about their different thoughts on DC. I mean, you've had a bunch of episodes with me and Hannah already, so we gotta get we gotta get some more guests in here. And obviously with video. So watch the video. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Keep tuned and keep up with the post Athens on all social media. All right. Bye, bye guys. Bye.